Hi gorgeous, today we're getting comfy because I'm doing a q and A. I I uh, posted something on Instagram a couple weeks ago asking for some, I'm just realizing how bold my shirt is, but we're gonna roll with it. It's cute, it's kind of cropped, so I'm not gonna show you, uh, but it comes with like high-waisted shorts to go with it, it's like, it's like a match. Um, I don't have the shorts on right now because I don't feel like wearing shorts. Um, don't know where I got it from, sorry, but these are everywhere. Anyway, I put out a question and answer thing a couple weeks ago on Instagram uh, for this particular channel, and I got a lot of really great questions. I think I chose about 10 because they were all the same. The number one most asked question was, how do you stay fit when all you do is cook and eat? Now, I, I'm gonna cover this one first, and if you would like, a more in-depth video of the actual workouts I do. I don't know, if you want a more in-depth video, let me know down below on my you know, health, workout, routine, lifestyle, what have you, and sort of what you wanna see in that video, because I don't know. Uh, but really, overall, I am not the fittest person in the world. I'm a, almost 5'4", I weigh about 127 to 129 pounds, I, I don't have a six pack, I have a little cellulite, I'm a normal person, but I do work out to keep my shape and I'm very happy with my shape. And that's the most important thing is that you need to remember is that you need to be happy with the way you are already. And then that way you don't have some high expectations of what you should look like or what your body should be. And you also have to keep in mind, you have to be realistic. What is your life like? I've said this before, I don't have the pressure of being the next Gigi Hadid and having the most incredible body because I'm a supermodel. I don't have the pressure to be on stage like Katy Perry and where she has to look incredible. I don't have the pressure to be the, you know, the next workout guru. That's not my life. I cook, I cook for a living, I love to cook, I love to eat, I love to cook for my friends and family, I love real food, I love all food, and I just, I do not believe in deprivation because I think once you start depriving yourself, then it's, you know, on from there. And like I said, the most important thing is realizing, you know, be realistic. If you are a mom of, you know, my sister-in-law, for example, she's beautiful. Heather is my sister-in-law. She has, well, I have multiple sister-in-laws, but Heather is the one who has children. She has four kids, all under the age of seven. Um, she's wonderful. She's a wonderful mother. She's absolutely beautiful. She, um, she's just, she's beautiful, and she's confident in who she is. She doesn't have time to work out. She doesn't always make the best choices when it comes to food, and by that I mean, like, if she wants... I wouldn't say it's just to always make the best choice. She's gonna make great choices, but the point is, if she wants a donut in the middle of the afternoon with her kids, she's gonna have one once in a while, and I think that's liberating. I love seeing moms like that who, you know, for the most part, you know, are act she's very active in, in ways that she doesn't stop for a second. She has four kids. Um, she's got a great physique. She's in shape because she doesn't stop, but she's not someone who's constantly thinking about what she needs to eat or have some strict routine or because she's a mom of four and she's very realistic and she says, listen, there's gonna come a, there's gonna come a time where I can focus on myself and I can work out every day if I want to, but while my kids are little and while they need me, they are going to give my undivided attention. And I think that that's how you should think. Think about what you need. Think about what your life is like before you even think about wanting to be this next, wanting to have this incredible body because it might not be realistic for you, just like it's not realistic for me. I will work out for an hour a day max because I spend a lot of time on recipe, recipe testing, filming, you name it. And an hour a day is perfect for me. Now, I do love to eat, and I do like to eat a lot, but I love to eat real food, you know. I do love my chips once in a while. I love to have a bag of, like, um, salt and vinegar chips. Um, I love to eat cereal in the morning sometimes. I love to have a donut in the afternoon. Sometimes in the fall, I have a nice pumpkin donut, but that's not every day. I fuel my body with tons and tons of vegetables and fruit 
every single day. I have at least two servings of fruit every single day. Even if I travel, I will find a way to eat fruit every day, at least twice a day, no matter where I am in the world, no matter what time of year it is. Um, that's just, it makes me feel good. I feel, I just, it gives me energy. It just curbs my sweet tooth in the middle of the afternoon on a regular day. Um, you know, that's just how I am. And I always, always have to have vegetables at least twice a day. I will have vegetables with either, you know, my lunch or my dinner, not breakfast sometimes, but I always, always have to have vegetables. And then I am a lover of pasta, I'm a lover of carbs, and I don't think you should deprive yourself of them. I think they're, I'm no nutrient, you know, nutritionist, I'm no nutrient queen or whatever. I just, I'm gonna tell you what works for me because that's what I've been asked. You know, I like to eat real food, but this is the most important thing, portion. You wanna eat real food, you need to know, how, you know, you need to eat the right amount of it. I don't eat a t I don't eat a plate this big. I eat off of a seven and a half inch plate, um, which I mentioned this years ago. You know, my mother gave me a, a set of uh, plates and stuff when I got married. And I came home and I thought, huh, these dinner plates are so much smaller than the ones I have here. Let me measure them. Well, the standard dinner plate here in the US is 11 inches. And the one I, got, I have from Italy that my mom uses, my grandparents use, everyone uses is about seven and a half inches. So when you fill a seven and a half inch plate versus an 11 inch plate, there's a huge difference. And it's really like a, a mental thing. When you see a plate that's full, you think, oh, that's gonna be so satisfying. When you see a plate that's half empty, you think to yourself, what? I mean, I'm gonna be starving after this because I'm not having a full plate. So try eating off of the right size plates. You might need to buy a new set of, pot, you know, of plates or you might just wanna buy a couple of them. You know, you don't have to buy a whole set. The point is, know the right portions. You know, the right portion of pasta shouldn't be a half of a box for two people. You know, one box of pasta should feed six people. I know that it should technically feed eight but that's really really pushing it <laughs> one box of pasta should really feed, feed six people um, and then if you're putting a lot of stuff in it if you're doing like a meat sauce or a merit or a primavera or stuff like that then I actually do one box for six three quarters of a box for six people because I just feel like you've got so much vegetables and stuff in it but I love my pastas and I'm not gonna give them up I love my bread I'm not gonna give it up but I don't have bread every day and I am a big believer that you should work out every day and it doesn't have to be a workout it can be you know walk in your house you know for half an hour just do nothing but pick up you know when you're picking up the house, right? Just do it with a little bit more pep in your step. If you're gonna bend over to pick something up, you know, do it with real meaning. Maybe bend a little bit to give yourself a, an extra squat or that is moving. I know my Aunt Mimi who's in her 60s, she's so funny because she's in great shape. And one of the things, the things that she does is that she will, when she does laundry, she has a really low basket. She doesn't have one of those high baskets. That way when she bends down, she bends down and picks up one thing individually to put in the washer. And every time she bends down, she does a squat. And you know what? That might not sound like a lot, but that's at least like, I don't know, 12 to 15 squats a day. Do that multiple times. You're walking around, you're going up and down your steps. You're just, you're parking a little bit further away at the grocery store so you can walk a few extra feet. All of that helps. Now I keep that in mind every single day, but I also like to work out every day. And I don't like to do really long workouts because again, I don't have time and I do not like to go to a public gym. I, well, I shouldn't say I don't like going to a public gym, I don't like going to a public gym alone. Um, I just don't like to. Joe will not go with me, to be honest with you, <laughs> and nor would I want to force him to. Um, so basically, I used to live really close to one of my good girlfriends, and we used to work out every day together at, our, at my house. We used to have a little gym and basement. Um, now I live about half an hour away from her. So what we do is um, twice a week, I will go, well two to three times a week, I will go over to her house. And I know that sounds crazy because I go early in the morning, but she lives right around the corner from Joe's family business. And since Joe has to be there anyway on those three days, I'll just go with him and go to my girlfriend's to work out and then we'll leave from there because he has to go for a couple hours in the morning a few days a week. So it just works out really well. And then the other two days a week or three days a week, if I'm working out and doing um, six days, I will work out at home. I'm a big believer in those at home workouts. I know they work. That's how I stay in shape, large shape anyway. Um, 
I know they work. It's just about finding the right one, the right one for you. Now I know everyone knows about the P90X, which I've done and loved. The only problem with P90X is that it's really long. Each workout is about an hour or more. The yoga one is an hour and a half, and I just sometimes don't have the time to do that. But that's a great workout. Not for a beginner, but it's a great workout. There's also one by Tony Horton called Power 90. It came out in the 90s. It's phenomenal. That was actually the very first workout I ever purchased. And when I started working out with my friend Jamie, that's the one we started with. And I'm telling you, it worked. And it's only about 30 minutes a day. So you don't have to do a lot of you know long strenuous exercises to really build some muscle and build some strength. Now, one of my all-time favorite uh, workouts is by Shalene Johnson and it's called Shalene Extreme. It's fantastic. I've done multiple rounds of it. I think it's a 90 day program. I've done multiple rounds of it and when I was in the best shape I think of my life, um, which was summer of 2012, I mean I'm really in the same shape now but I was much more, I said much more toned but really I worked out on my abs a lot more <laughs> so that's why I think that um, that was a great, great workout program. Each workout is about 45 minutes or so to an hour, I think, but right around 45 minutes. It's really fantastic, and uh, I plan on purchasing her new workout program um, next month. So, Shalene Extreme is one of my favorites. I will list my favorites down below. I get all mine from Beach, Beach, Bo Beach Body, Beach Bod, Beach Body. They don't know I exist. This is not a sponsored video by any means. I wish they would know I exist because those can be a little bit pricey, <laughs> but um, they're worth every penny. A recent favorite workout uh, program of mine is by Autumn Calabrese, and it's called the 21 Day Fix, and she also has one called 21 Day Fix Extreme. Now, in the program, she also has a diet plan, which I don't follow. I don't need to follow. I'm not looking to lose weight. I'm just I like to work out and I like to try different workouts all the time. Um, I'm currently doing the 21 Day Fix Extreme because I did do the 21 Day Fix and I thought it was fantastic. It really toned up my legs, which is really hard to do. Um, so I'm now doing the 21 Day Fix Extreme and it is quite extreme, I'm not going to lie to you, but it's fantastic. So those are sort of my few, a few of my favorites. Um, you know, I've tried a lot, and like I said, it's about finding the right one for you. I tried the the um, Insanity. While it's a good workout and you sweat a lot, if you have lower back problems or knee problems, that would not be the one for you. I have really bad lower back problems. I got um, a few years ago, I, I ended up having sciatica in my lower back, and it has not been the same since. So anytime I do some sort of jumping or just really, really strenuous cardio. It really, really flares up my back, so I have to be very careful. So I don't tend to do that one anymore. I actually gave that one away because I just wasn't doing it. It was just collecting dust. And I also didn't like how much jumping was involved because my knees would just, every time I would jump, it would feel like a crack. So it's about finding the right one for you. And really, overall, my biggest suggestion would be to eat real food, the right portions, make good choices throughout the day. You know, if I had a donut today, I'm not going to have one tomorrow. Although, although, for the two weeks my brother was here from Italy, we ate a donut every morning. <laughs> not every morning, maybe three or four times a week. And But you know what? I didn't regret a single bit of it. They were obsessed with Dunkin' Donuts and I wanted to take them there because they never had it before and they were, you know, they were like, I have to have this before I go home because then I'll never have it again. Um, so I indulged right in there with them and I took two weeks off from working out. I lost a ton of muscle. I lost definition. I ate anything and everything for those two weeks, but as soon as I left, the very next morning, I was right back to my workouts. I was right back to my green juice, right back to my oatmeal in the morning or whatever I normally eat. And um, it, it was very easy to get back into the routine. And that's the thing, don't be discouraged if you go on vacation and you gain a couple extra pounds. It's vacation, you, that's, that's what you do, you know? So don't be discouraged. But so my biggest thing would be, you know, make your life a priority, you know, be realistic, eat the right portions, keep it moving every day, whether it's a workout, at home workouts, or just running around all day for 30 minutes, um, you know, just keep it moving. And uh, that's really it, that's all I do. That's really all I do. So, uh, and make working out or that 30 minutes of movement a part of your everyday routine because that really, really helps. Okay, so I got that out of the way, so we are gonna get going on answering some of the other questions. Um, 
one of the questions was from Zub Lander and was how do you keep your hair voluminous and have it not go flat? Now you can see my uh, hair is quite um, wavy today, but the most the biggest thing I suppose is that my hair has layers and I don't, and I have very full hair. I don't have very thin, straight hair. My sister-in-law, Natasha, has beautiful, like just thinner hair, but it's straight and it's long and it's not very voluminous unless she teases it, but it's beautiful. My suggestion would be, if you want a lot of volume in your hair, would be to cut layers all over your hair. But remember that if you cut layers throughout your hair, you're not gonna be able to wear it straight because it's gonna look weird with all those layers. It's not gonna blend very easily. So you have to pick one or the other. Do you want straight, sleek hair or do you want volume and movement? Because if you want volume and movement, you need layers. Uh, Mero Rosie says, do you only eat when you're hungry? I guess that just, I guess answers that question as well with my workout diet routine. Um, I do only eat when I'm hungry. But, you know, like I said, if I'm on vacation and everyone's having a croissant in the middle of the afternoon and I'm not necessarily hungry, I won't have my all croissant to myself, but I will have a bite or two just, just because I can. Um, but yes, generally I only eat when I'm hungry. Don't, I'm not a big, um, I'm not a big stress eater at all. I actually the opposite. I tend to just get so involved with what I'm doing, with, with what's stressing me out, that that's all I can focus on. Um, I'm not a big picker. Uh, if I pick, which I do like to do, if I have a, a fruit tray in the fridge, I will pick all day because I, I'm obsessed with fruit. Um, mangoes right now are my everything I want to consume. Um, but um, yeah, that would be the only time I would be picking. Let me make sure my mic is still good. Yep. At Florlinda Designs, since you love nude lipstick so much, can you give us a favorite combo? I'm actually wearing it today. My favorite nude lip, com nude lip combo of all time is a MAC Strip Down Lip Liner. I basically outline my lips and fill in the corners, and I put in the middle some uh, MAC lipstick in peach stock, and then I go over with any nude lip gloss. One of my all-time favorites, which I know is discontinued, is by Revlon, and it's called Peach Petal. I know it's discontinued, but any nude lip will any nude lip gloss will do. This is my all-time favorite nude lip, and I think it always will be. At Lisa's shoe gal. Love that. You seem so happy in your life, so relaxed. What is your secret? How do you deal with those who try to bring you down? Love your vlogs. Best wishes from the Netherlands. Oh, thank you. One day I'm gonna get to the Netherlands. That is on my bucket list. Um, well, you know, life is what you make it. I, you know, I've seen tragedies happen in my, you know, to, to those around me, sudden deaths, um, you know, and I'm just a really big believer that life is about this long. And if you are wasting it, if you are living your life sad, unhappy, miserable, angry, you're not doing yourself any favors. You're not living it to the fullest. Um, how do I deal with those who try to bring me down in life? And I remember this when I was a child. My grandmother telling me this when I was a child because um, they were little girls in school who would try to um, steal my things from my backpack or just be kids, really. And my grandmother would say, there's always going to be someone in your life that's going to try to bring you down. That's just the reality of it. But the secret is, if they're not personally connected to you, that you shouldn't take it personal. If you're not a big part of your life, you should not let it affect you. There's always gonna be someone that wants to bring you down. It's your job to make sure they don't affect you. They have no, they have no meaning in your life in the long run. Those little girls who are taking your stuff and who are making you cry will not be your friends. So when you're 30 years old, is it, how is this gonna affect you when you're 30? She always used to say that to me and she always used to say, this phrase, which I'll say in Italian, then I'll translate. Meglio solo che mal accompagnata. It's always better to be alone than in bad company. So really surround yourself with people you know have your best interest in heart, at heart. Because really, how many of us can say, oh, I have so many friends here. I have so many friends at this point in my life. Did you really? I can count on one hand how many girlfriends I have in my life that I trust fully on one hand. I have a lot of acquaintances, but I only have a handful of people that I would trust with every secret. 
I would trust with, I know that I have any secrets, with my life, I would trust with very big decisions because I know that, I mean, those are people who never try to bring me down. Those are people who try to bring me up when I'm sad. Those are people that try to reassure me when I'm not convinced in myself or when I'm not being, um, when I just don't believe in myself. And that's what you need to think about. Have people around that you know and trust. And those people that you, that are bringing you down, they gotta go. They have got, they have no place in your life. If they're making you sad and miserable, they have absolutely no place in your life. And my secret to, um, how you, you know, you seem so happy. What's your secret? I don't have a secret. I just, I love life, you know. I'm incredibly blessed to be able to do what I do for a living. Um, it's not always easy. And people seem to think it is, but it isn't. It's not always easy. It's not always fair. But we don't live in an easy, fair world, you know. Life isn't always going to be easy and fair. It's about how you go through those times and how you come out of it that show your true character. I'm a hard worker always have been I will not back down and I will not give up and um, at the end of the day I come out stronger and being more appreciative and more grateful than I was before whatever situation so I hope that answers your question mrs. Bloomfield what do you say to someone who's starting to lose weight in a healthy way the biggest thing would be to first of all feed yourself with h2o with some water all day every day and the second thing is don't ever go hungry or starve yourself that's the complete opposite because once you start starving yourself then the next day you're gonna binge so the key for me when I'm trying to lose a couple pounds wheel it back in after a long vacation is to just fuel my body with nothing but nutrients and fuel your body with things that are going to keep it moving if you will keep it keep things from being flushed out no eat things that keep you flushed out if without being gross fiber vegetables fruit those are all things that are going to keep you in moving um, and i think that's the most important thing just eat it, all good things um, and that's me it says how do you keep your love alive despite your busy schedule big hug from Holland that's another place I want to go to I saw a picture of Holland um, oh, my dad went there when, he, when I was little and he brought me back with like little shoes anyway um, how do you keep your love alive despite okay well the very first thing I always always keep in mind is that when Joe and I met and when we got married we got married because we loved each other and I was his main priority, he was my main priority, our marriage was our very main priority. We started working together after. So what's really important here is to make sure you always keep in mind that your marriage comes first. If you feel like you're working too hard or your husband's working too hard and something's missing in terms of communication, attention, wheel it back in. Be very honest. Joe and I are incredibly honest with each other. We have a great, uh, we communicate really, really well. Neither one of us will sit in the corner and not say what we really mean because, no, you need to say what you mean. Because guess what? That's the only way. He can't read your mind. I can't read his mind. So, I don't, it's not worth having a big blow up later. You need to be upfront and honest now when, whenever you're having an issue. And for us, it's really important to keep our marriage first. And I mean, we're very lucky to be doing something we really love together. So I guess it makes it a little bit easier because it doesn't always really feel like work. It just feels like we're working on our baby. No, no. You know what I mean? Like our job is uh, my, you know, what we've created is kind of like a little baby, something that we've made together. And, um, you know, that's really wonderful. And I find that to be, I don't know, it's it's a part of our relationship, but really keeping our marriage first before anything else is what's the most important thing. And never go to bed angry because you'll wake up angry and then you lose two days and that's not right. Okay, um, someone asked, how do you keep your hair clean after one day without washing it? I don't get really greasy hair up until like the third day if I don't wash it. Um, which I wash my hair every three days. I just use a little dry shampoo, but if your hair gets oily every day, then you're gonna have to probably wash it every day, but I would suggest dry shampoo, so you can at least go every other day without washing your hair, so because it's better. Um, at Hannah's Infinity, I loved this question. How do you find your own personal style? Well, this is a great, great question. With all the trends that you know come and go every season, and 
you know, I don't know about you, but I follow a ton of fashion bloggers on Instagram because I love to be inspired and I love seeing what everybody else wears, but that's not necessarily going to mean that that's what I'm going to wear. Over the years, I have made the mistake of buying something because so on and so forth was wearing it. Or one day I will wear it if I lose five pounds. I've made all those mistakes just to realize that things were hanging in my closet with the tags still on, never been worn, just pretty much a waste of money. I've learned that you really have to wear what makes you comfortable. From day to day, I'm a jeans and t-shirt or jeans and tank top kind of girl. When it comes to summertime, I live in boyfriend jeans and a t-shirt and I can easily wear them with flip flops or if I really want to dress it up, I throw in a pair of pumps and it instantly gives me a chic sort of no effort look. In the fall time, I mean, I just a very casual, but I do like to elevate it with like a leather jacket, which I'm going to be doing a whole video on that with like a leather jacket or some heels or things like that. But really, that's what makes me feel really comfortable. I am not someone who will wear short shorts all summer long because I just, I have short legs, so not a lot of shorts really look good on me. Um, so there's that. That's the truth. They don't always look good on me. Um, but really, it's about what makes you feel comfortable. Forget what's trendy. Forget what you think you should be wearing. Forget what everyone else is wearing. Wear what makes you comfortable. If you feel comfortable in jeans and a t-shirt, well then you rock that jeans and your t-shirt and you feel confident in it. Put on a pair of like aviators and you are out the door looking fabulous and fierce. So really that, that's my biggest, um, my biggest tip would be to wear what makes you feel comfortable and then just try to see how you can elevate it a little bit. That's, that's what I did. That's what I do. Okay, um, at OK Cupcake says, what are your favorite products to get a glowy look. Well, I always think a glowy look comes from a base. So your foundation should be sort of the first thing that gives you a bit of a do, I suppose. Because if you try to do a matte foundation with a bunch of with a bunch of glowy powders, then it's just gonna look you like you've got a bunch of powders on your face. One of the things I love, I'm gonna actually um, two things I love. A little bit high end, but if you let me try and get this one, which is kind of the, um, ba, 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 ba. okay, I've got three products I'll share with you. I don't know if you've tried this. this. This is the Dior Glow Maximizer. It is a light boosting primer. Wow, it's really blending in. First of all, it smells fantastic. This is a primer that gives you the most dewy finish ever. I don't know if you can see, you see that? smells phenomenal. This is a go-to for me in the winter when my skin is dry as the Sahara. Um, it's an absolute must-have for me. Something from the drugstore that's kind of equivalent. Now you can't wear it, well you can, I just never have. Wear this like a primer. I do like to dab this over foundation sort of on the top of my cheekbones, bridge of the nose, you know, a little bit on the um, chin and Cupid's bow. It is the Revlon Photo Ready Skin Lights. And this particular color is pink light, but there's a beige one that would work a lot better for that. Um, and this as well will give you a little bit of nice dewiness. And it's phenomenal. You just can't wear this. You can, however, mix this in foundation. Um, and it does give you nice dewy complexion. So that's kind of the equivalent, the drugstore equivalent to the Dewar Maximizer. And then always in the winter time, I go through at least a bottle or two of the uh, MAC Fix Plus. This will take away every bit of powder and give you the most dewy finish ever. This is not a long lasting setting spray, it's just a very dewy finishing spray. So try that because I think it really will help. Okay. At Kika777 says, what is your opinion on friendships, girlfriends? What do you do after they found out that they've been talking about you? I touched this on a little bit about earlier. Um, basically, the most important thing is to get those people out of your life. That's truly what I believe in. You've got to get those, out, those people out because they are just not worth your time whatsoever. Um, when you find out someone's talking about you, they don't care for you very much and there's no need to have them in your life. That's all. Okay, I think that's everything. Um, yeah, that is it. that's all the questions I have. So I hope that that has answered everything you wanted to know. Let me know down below if you want to see these more frequent. If you have any questions for me, ow, that really hurt. 
If you have any questions for me, uh, leave them down below. I'll do another one of these. If I haven't answered some of the questions you wanted to know, just leave them down below and I would love to make this a part of my regular sort of scheduling because I think it's a great way for you to get to know me a little bit more. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.